frame rater. This is a Philips CDI, a 450 unit to be precise. It's a mostly edutainment focused console that is junky for multiple reasons. I think for someone like me, an optimist when it comes to retro hardware, to see a console as junky, it takes a lot. And honestly, the CDI is kinda deserving of it. I'd like to say first and foremost that if you like the CDI, that's awesome. It has a lot of historical value that is worthy of attention. I could be seated at a CDI fan club and have a good time with its enthusiasts, but I will stand by my opinion. I believe the console is junky. Also, when you turn it on, it screams. People often looked at the CDI as something other than a console. Philips themselves would only ever loosely refer to it as one anyways. There are several videos out there today to tell you the full story, but from my perspective, you won't find anyone buying a CDI today for any reasons other than playing its library of games. So when referring to the CDI in a present tense, calling it a console is probably the most accurate terminology. To tell you why I believe the console is junky, I have to first tell you of my CDI adventures that brought me to the point that I'm at today. In late November of 2020, an amateur dev known as Doppley released remastered versions of Link Faces of Evil and Wand of Gamelon, the two of three forbidden Zelda games. This game journalist site says, yes, they're as bad as you remember, to which I say Poiseuille probably didn't even play them. But we'll be looking more at those two games soon because this is what inspired me to buy the CDI. Yes, the day I could experience my only real interest in the CDI without one was the day I decided to buy one. I don't know, the whole idea of Nintendo lending out their IPs, turning into be a dreadful decision, perhaps inspiring their hostility towards fan projects today, I mean this is just such a hilarious thing, I had to have some part of it. Additionally, the newly brought attention to these games persuaded me into thinking that now was the time to cover them. But I didn't feel right covering them without having first experienced them the way they were meant to be played during their time of release. So I bid on the cheapest CDI I could find listed on eBay. I won, and now I just have to wait. For a friend to tell me a thing or two about the CDI's timekeeper battery. I knew this thing would be a problem, I've heard of it before, but I didn't ever think it would be as big a problem as it turned out to be. Let me start by introducing you to what this problem is, first and foremost. When designing their console, Philips had to come up with a solution for saving data, like in-game progress for example. How'd they manage? With a battery, that has a lifespan of 20 years. The Philips CDI came out in 1990, so you do the math. There are some cases where the battery has lasted longer, mostly for units that have been stored in colder environments and are relatively unused. And this should all be fine though, right? Since you can just replace it. Uh, sure, yeah, I can say that it is a technical possibility to replace the battery. However, it involves obtaining a small drill, ever so carefully stripping this chip, which is already a terrifying idea, and making sure not to cut out anything important in the process. I, for one, am not usually on the side of butchering retro consoles, but it seems like with the CDI, you pretty much have to now. This is just to replace a simple battery. No other console I'm aware of had gone to such lengths to hide this thing. Most sources I've found online suggest that you don't stop there either, and take extra measures to make sure the thing is easily replaceable for the future. More stuff I'm completely inexperienced with. Now, upon first hearing about all this, I thought, okay, I can just play through the remasters and experience them the way they were designed. I'll just have to settle with not being able to save. Well, unfortunately, it turns out this battery going bad can have far more severe consequences than just that. Several reports have stated that for their units, once the battery died, so too did the console. Yes, in some reported cases, the console wouldn't even boot anymore once their battery stopped working. In other reports, once their battery died, the console no longer accepted games. Supposedly, you may run into an issue where clicking the play button will no longer execute the game and just hang on that screen. What's more frustrating is that this stuff hasn't been heavily documented. And I mean that in one particular way. The issues of the CDI, those have been documented. But the relevancy of their issues with their associated consoles? Not so much. Much like the eventual 3DO console, the CDI had multiple variations produced by different manufacturers. There's the Gold Star GDI 1000, the LG GDI 700M, the multiple portable CDIs like the 350, or Philips' own line of CDIs of which there's far too many variations to mention. For which CDI model does the Timekeeper battery brick the console? No idea. For which CDI model do the games not boot? No idea. For which CDI model would I only have to worry about games not saving? Who knows? I would answer what my situation is, but I don't actually have the games here yet to test it. I've been able to play CDs, but I don't know if that would guarantee games work. There's a reason why this is all still such a mysterious case. It's because barely anyone cares to bother with the CDI anymore regardless. 
It was a failed system with a library that these days have very slim appeal. The only reason it's ever really brought up anymore is because of those Nintendo licensed games, but even then nobody wants to really play them. If you felt required to play them, you could just emulate them, even though I've heard doing such a thing is still quite difficult. Granted, at that point you'd be missing out on part of its awful charm, which would be one of several mutually terrible controllers. What is the deal with this thing? Now, I've used a lot of controllers before, and I can say with confidence this is the worst I've ever held. I can kind of understand using this for those edutainment games, but for an action game like Zelda, or even Mario for that matter? I'm yet to experience it and I'll let you know how that goes, but I can't even imagine. You have to move your thumb over to the very indents of the buttons to click inwards. Not to mention the action buttons are off to the far left and right? I mean it, I genuinely cannot imagine what this is like to play. Just as a last minute mention here, how weird is this? The CDI is powered through the equivalent of a modem cable. I've never seen this used to power something like that before. With all the uncertainty and confusion regarding this CDI that was coming, I started to look into other solutions. There's some guy on eBay who sells CDIs with the supposed best CDI controller available, an RGB out mod, the timekeeper battery has been replaced, and it has a voltage switch so you can use it anywhere. All you may need is a plug adapter. It seemed like the ultimate modern solution, so I caved in. The nice guy is even including a free game with it for me, which I hope could possibly be Namco's Arcade Classics because it's, well, the only other game for the platform that even remotely interests me. I find it rather unfortunate that both CDIs I purchased happen to be the exact same model. Would have been pretty cool to experience one of the others instead of two 450s, but I will say this is the best looking CDI console out there. The rest genuinely look like VCRs, not quite something I'd keep on display to say, hey guys, look what I have, you know? If there's anything I'm happy about with getting this first CDI, I get to experience this abomination of a controller before I use the other supposedly okay but still pretty bad one. So where am I today with all this? I have a PAL CDI with a terrible controller, I'm waiting on three reproduction games, as well as a modded CDI that should've just been what I went with in the first place. Why'd I make today's video? Just to complain? Yeah, kinda but more so for two specific reasons. One, the issues with the CDI need to be more publicized to help people make more educated decisions. Don't buy one unless it's pre-modded or you're actually willing to take on the responsibility of fixing it. A no doubt daunting task. Two, I have invested so much dang money into a simple Zelda CDI video that I now feel the need to grind this thing just to make even half of what I paid back. So thanks for watching this first Frame Raider CDI video of which several are no doubt coming in the future. If you like this and are thirsty for more, then hit that subscribe button because there's gonna be a lot more CDI coming, whether I like it or not.